beaten, stoned, slammed against walls, knives, ridiculed, shipwrecked. In the face of great danger and extreme sacrifice, there are women around the world who have risked everything to bring hope to the hopeless. In the deep south and urban America, the red zone of the Congo, a village in China, in closed nations, in the bush of Africa. And one of the things that when revival is going on, women rise to places of leadership. These women are living outside their own cultures and society. Caring for those overlooked, ignored, and abandoned. They are building schools, liberating addicts, feeding the helpless and poor, and loving the broken. For the sake of others, giving your time, your effort, your money, just for the sake of others and believing in others. It's, she is, she's, a, she's one of my heroes, the faith. And... Come join our journey as the Holy Spirit leads us around the world. and watch the ripple effect as ordinary women bring extraordinary hope in unlikely places. God enjoys taking impossible and turning it into beautiful. It's just work and faith and faith and work together for James. I just felt like God said, just put your hope in me, put your trust in me and don't give up and don't give up, and don't give up, and just keep going until they say yes. Please meet Ken and Lisa Henderson. Wrote, directed, produced the newly released film documentary Hope Has a Name. Amazing couple. The film was produced live on Merritt Island, Florida, and released in 2017. It's an inspiring documentary film. Uh, amazing. Ken Henderson is also a pastor of Salt Life Church and oversees Cornerstone School of Supernatural Ministry. So neat to have you yes. guys. Thank you. Thank Welcome. You. It's a big honor. I mean, that, nothing like a picture and yeah. that, that is a, even though it's a film, but it's a, it's a picture of what you guys are involved in. Ken, start with you, and, and Lisa, jump in. <laughs> if he gets the story wrong, say, yeah. you know, go ahead and correct him. She will. My wife does that all the time, so don't worry about it. Okay. But how does a guy say, this is what I'm going to do? This is what I'm supposed to do? God is telling me to do that. How do you do that? Well, first of all, you marry the right woman. <laughs> that. There you go. <laughs> That'll work every time. Um, unfortunately, our son had an addiction problem. Yeah. And uh, for 16 years, he really struggled with drug addiction. And would he come home and then go and come home? or How did he work? Uh, he was on the street quite a bit, and it was pretty painful to watch. So you and Lisa mm -hmm. are praying for this boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, specifically, um, there was a time when, when we got kind of angry and said, okay, if you're going after us, Satan, we're coming after you. Wow. And so we started doing work on, uh, and we had been in ministry, but we had left ministry for about three years um, due to the, the situation that we were in. And so- You felt this disqualified you? I did, yeah. uh, and, and so uh, we finally decided instead of quitting, we're just going to go full bore into yeah. this. And so in the process, I would call him uh, on the telephone and I'd say, hey, man of God. And I was calling him forth into his calling. And eventually... Who, who are you talking to? My son. son. 
who son. was it, having this addiction. Good. We call and, him man uh, of God, which yeah. is great. That is yeah. wonderful. And so we would call him into it, and eventually God stepped in and made a way for him while he was still in his addiction to go to a place called Dunklin Memorial, which is down in South Florida. And when we were there, there was a, na a lady by the name of Mary Lanier, and she was in her 80s, and she would play videos. Now, understand when they were there, they couldn't have outside uh, contact with anybody. They couldn't have cell phones. They couldn't have computers or those kind of things. So all they had was at night, they could go to Miss Mary's house and Miss Mary would play the latest uh, praise and worship and those kind of things. And it's just a beautiful setting and she ministered to, uh, we estimate about 22,000 men Are you over serious? the years. And nobody knew who she was. And it really touched my wife and she said, I wonder how many other women are out there. And so she felt like she had a word from God to less uh, find those women and show what they're doing and that's basically what the film is about. You want to jump in here? Yeah, we just, that was 2012 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we even had the name for the movie, Hope Has a Name and based on, you know, that's a female name but based on his name is Hope, he'll be Hope to the Nation. Absolutely. And so we carried this idea, this burden around for about four years and then in 2016 during a time of intercession, the Lord said, um, I gave that to you and your husband, but if you don't do it, I'm giving it to somebody else. And I was like, Lord, no, don't don't give it to somebody else. We'll do it. I just, the logistics, the, the finances, oh, yeah. we knew that we possibly would be going around yeah. the world. How are we going to do this? Yeah, people that have never done a film, because I, I was associated with the fellow that did a film in a ministry that I had years ago. And I was educated what yeah. it takes. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, the finances, uh, I mean the hoops that you have to go through, yes. no one understands unless you've been there like you guys. Right, right. it's huge and the, finan yeah, the finances of course was, was a large part of it. We pastor a small church and um, just the logistics of everything, how do we pull this together? And he said, um, you know that little bit of money that we have for our own ministry account outside the church, the church didn't fund this, and um, he said, that little bit of money you have in there? I said, yes. He said, start there. Wow. He said, you step, I step. And so I said, yes, Lord. And I came home and told him what I felt like the Lord had said, and he said, let's do it. My and goodness, so we started contacting people, and we've been how many miles now? Somewhere around 50,000 miles, uh, four continents, seven countries are all represented in the film. Ken, what, what do you, you pick up a phone and you need finances. Okay, and this God has given you this. What do you What do you say to them? Because because you, you get, people don't realize when you have a vision, you've got to present that vision so well that the people you're talking to catch it. Yeah. Uh, the, we only had realistically maybe three or four investors uh, that were involved, and they were people who personally knew us and they just believed in us as much as they believed in anything. That's a and, good reputation. And so yeah. that, that was uh, the catalyst for the first donations which came in. And they just uh, showed up at the house one day and uh, handed us a check for $5,000. Not, not a tremendous amount of money. Not when one film. At, yeah. you no, know, it's yeah. not. Uh, yeah. And especially when you're going to China yeah. and, um, uh, you know, different places 50, around. 50000 would be just a start. Yes. In a yeah, film. yeah, you're was, right. Yeah. Yes. And so, so uh, uh, you know, you just have to represent and do a little vision forecasting with them and say this is going to impact, you know, we believe still millions of people. And uh, because the, the film is challenging because what it shows is people who had nothing, starting with nothing, and developing ministries and doing amazing things around the world. Where do you, where did you find the women though for this? I mean, that, that right there would be a challenge. Miss Mary was well, the first right. one. Yeah. Then in Bartow, Florida, not too far from here, in Bartow, Florida was another lady who uh, does work in uh, Carver Village, mm -hmm. which is kind of a ghetto, if you will. And, and she uh, has, we've known her for years and the work that she had done and we had actually been over and worked with her. And it was kind of like God just lined it up. And, and So the, these are individuals yes. mm -hmm. that no one knows about 
Right. And they're doing what God asked them to do. Yes. Helping people that no one else would care about. Right. A lot of them are, are hidden, unknown. There's not, it's not for fortune or fame, and that's what really struck me, um, that th they're not doing it for that reason. The girl he was talking about, Jessica, has been in Bartow for 14 years. She's just, a, I say, a skinny white girl um, going into a place that most churches don't even want to go. Mm -hmm. And day after day, week after week, month after month, is impacting um, that area. Um, and from there, the Lord just started bringing people, um, you know, to our mind or, or to our attention. Someone would say, hey, what about this woman um, up here? Well, my daughter actually talked about a lady from Mississippi that she met when she was in Africa. And she, she's uh, moved her little family into um, Jackson, Mississippi, into a really bad area. And um, it's turned in that place upside down or right side up for Jesus. So, and then the, that person will say, hey, go to the Congo. And it was just one person led to another person. Now, how so did they're you, mainly in uh, in this country. There's no, no, no. three there's, in this country three. represented, and um, four is it four in other nations? Yeah, Mozambique, um, Congo, the Congo, a closed nation. A closed nation that we we show her uh, in this closed nation. It's a, a predominantly Muslim nation, and everything she does, she does at risk of life. And um, oh when, when we were uh, getting ready to film her, and then also China, by the way. Now, by the way, how did you get permission to get in there? Uh, we actually had her come to us because we okay. would not have been yeah. able to yeah. obtain yeah. Yes. permission. Right. Uh, the, the week that she was here, she told us about somebody who had recently tried to do something with the underground church there and actually filmed an individual from behind and they still figured out who he was and, and, killed, and him. killed him. And oh, so right. um, it's something America doesn't understand mm -hmm. for the most part, uh, but, but really at, at risk of life and limb to serve her nation and the people that, that she loves. And so we... How was she converted? She was converted, I think, um, as a teenager. Um, Some missionary or how did that happen? I'm not sure because we didn't go into a lot of depth about her conversion and she's been serving God for quite some time, but um, as a young young lady. She, she was not from that country mm -hmm. originally. But she's serving there. Now, but that's where God led her to. Mm -hmm. And so... So like, every day she wakes up, she could die. Oh yes, day. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's several in there that are, are that way. When, when you look at the Congo, when we were ready to go to the Congo, the government said if you go in, and you get kidnapped or whatever. Our government. Our yeah. government said, we're not coming after you. We cannot guarantee your safety back to us. And so uh, when, when people are doing this, uh, it's, it's really at risk of, of life. We have it so, so easy. They, got to, yeah. they have to know that God called them to do this. That's Absolutely. the only way they could do it. Absolutely. And it's just amazing that the sacrifices they made. And each one of them, as you watch the story, started with nothing. I, there was no 501c3. There was no big organization backing them. They just, some of them started handing out peanut butter sandwiches mm -hmm. and went from there. Or, hey, I see a need of about, there's a fatherless generation right here in my town and I need to do something about it. And they just started doing things. And, and people who are watching the film are saying, they don't feel condemned by the film, but they feel challenged to do more and they yeah. feel hope that if they can do it, so can I. You know, just start with whatever I have. But some people would just maybe have written a book after you've gone yeah. around yeah. and interviewed the people, but most people would not go into a film. Right, uh, and I, I'm a writer. I've written um, books, I've written um, articles for national magazines, mm -hmm. so I guess that was an option, but I just felt strong in my spirit that... That's why you said marry the right one. <laughs> <laughs> I felt strong in my spirit that, that we were supposed to, to capture yeah. it on film and let people you know. We live in a uh, sound and sight generation, yeah. and it's getting uh, more prevalent as we go. You, oh, yeah. you, mm -hmm. you carry a cell phone with you, yeah. you have the internet, you have... Nobody uh, looks up anymore. Nobody looks They're up They're looking down. That's, that's correct. <laughs> uh, but everybody has this thing and, and this attraction to video. And so we felt like it was the best uh, mm -hmm. way to portray exactly what God was doing in the lives of these individuals. Now, tell me, you're place in making the movie. What did you do? 
For me, I went to film school. That is to say, I took three classes when I was in college. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, honest guy, that yeah. is. So uh, I did a little bit of everything. So yes. we, we wrote, uh, we filmed. I, I I was behind the camera at times, and I was the editor, and I I did almost all the sound editing, and uh, which which is you know uh, challenging. Because I mean, it's every little thing has to be uh, touched when you're dealing with yeah, sound. Because if sound's not there, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't have anything. You, you have can nothing. fix bad film, but you can't fix sound. Well, you know, That's right. and uh, and so uh, we were able to pull that together, yeah. and uh, you know, make sure all the levels are. You understand this because you have broadcast levels that you have to be concerned with. Mm -hmm. And so the greatest, one of the greatest compliments that I've gotten uh, on this work was when we actually debuted it in Merritt Island. We actually rented a theater, and the theater came out, and they said, wow, this is really professional. We usually see independent films, and we just kind of hang our head. He said, but this is amazing, especially the sound. And I was like, yes. Wow. <laughs> the, the quality so, of the picture. We had a, yeah. an amazing um, director uh, of photography. Yes. And Kyle Sailors, and he just you know, came along for the journey when we told him, we don't know. You know, we don't know how we're going to pay Financially, how we're we going to pay you, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, this wow. is really stepping out of We'll faith. have fun and, and, and eat some good yeah, food. So that's what <laughs> we did. We covered his expenses, and we were able to, of course, pay him because that's what he does professionally. Now only the Lord can do that. Yes. Yeah. It was a, the, the whole thing's a miracle. It's truly a miracle. It's supernatural how it happened. And the time frame actually uh, was shortened because when she told well, what me. What is what, the length of the movie? No, oh, it's an hour and 47 47. minutes. Mm -hmm. And so when, when she told me what she wanted to do, I said, well, we're probably looking at two years because I figured with the travel alone, it would mm -hmm. be spread out. And we were able to do it in about 11 months, which wow. uh, shortened the, the span of time. Now, how are you making a living during all this? Because you, you guys got to eat. Well, we're, we're pastors. Pastoring. Yeah, and, so, and so we'll, your church allowed your time. Well, well yes. understand this. We're full-time pastors, and we, I think, miss one Sunday. Uh, for the film, we would that was it. Yeah. I wow. would travel and always make sure that I was back, uh, and I would preach and I'd leave on a Sunday afternoon, and then we'd be back by the next Saturday. Except for China, and, when we're in except China. for China, which took about ten days. You know, preachers Maybe. have got to get yeah. Yeah, ready for the sermon. Yes. Oh, yeah. You must have been cranked all the time. <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know how to say. This. I, I live to study. I, I study, and she can tell you. Uh, Constantly. More than anybody, it's, uh, it's a day and night thing with me, and so I'm constantly. In you the are world. blessed to do what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. With that attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it. Well, it, it's the greatest privilege that I know yeah. of. Uh, I really believe that uh, the Word of God is the key to success oh. in life. Period. Mm -hmm. There is nothing right. greater. Yeah. When you when you get where I am in age. Yes, sir. You. you I mean, literally, I, I do this. I will take the the Bible mm -hmm. and just. I get hold it. it and I'll tell the Lord, I just want to push this inside of me. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, and, and it's like what you're saying, you can't get enough of it because it's the answer to yes. the world. To everything. 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 And, you know, we live, as Christians, we live inside out, yeah. not outside in. Oh, that's good. The that's good. world and society yeah. tries to push us from the outside in, yeah. but Jesus, the Holy Spirit's within. Yes. And so yes, yes. Uh, we've got. I've got to feed that inner man wow. constantly. And so, and the Bible says, you know, be ready at any time. Yes. And yes. so, yes. instant in season, out of season. So we're, we stay steady. But aren't we blessed? Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. That when you walk in your pulpit, open your Bible, somebody doesn't say, if you say a word, you're dead. Amen. Yeah. But I know, in but the I countries you were talking about, yes, yes sir. That's because I was, I, I was reading this book about. China. Mm -hmm. Yes. And these people that are Christians out in the, you know, bush area yeah. where, mm -hmm. where Chinese people live. Yeah. yeah. And they were talking about this church that this couple started. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they're in their Bible study and the doors crashed in and in comes the soldiers. We went the, to Fuji. The people in the group mm -hmm. either leave yeah. or you're dead. Yes. Right. And I'm thinking to myself, we don't have that. You, yeah. you don't understand it. And, and the people that we went to in Fuzhou, China, um, um, when, when you see them, there were things we couldn't talk about. Even in a setting like this or in a home setting, mm -hmm. the government was listening. And, and so 
we were very careful to cover and really. Now, were you allowed to take your cameras in all these oh, yes. places? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. That's wow. interesting. We're just careful. And we're careful to, to honor yeah. their government and honor right. them and not do anything that would be did any, dishonor. Did, did, any of them, dishonor. did you have to pay off anybody no. to no. keep your equipment? <laughs> sure. No. No, they were, you know, we went in, you know, as tourists and then and filmed and, um, you know, they, they were very kind to us. Yeah. Because we went to San Domingo, you know, and, and, and getting into the country, people are paid off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I mean, Rochester Jacob, he was my camera guy and director of the whole thing. And I remember the guy, Rochester comes to me and says, they're going to take my equipment unless, unless we pay them. I said, we got nothing. Right. I said, that's not why we're here. And he, and he said, he walked back to the guy and he goes, you're not going to take our equipment. I will sleep with my equipment all night. But when he told the guy that wanted to pay off, he said, go. He wasn't going to put up with this guy staying there yeah. in their whatever right. room they were going right. to put him at. And so it's interesting that countries, you, you don't realize what goes on mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. countries where you want to go in and, and do yeah. film well, that, and you're not allowed. Right. Right. They've done great advances with uh, what what is termed a DSLR camera, and it looks just like a regular, um, you know, yeah. photography yeah. camera. Yeah. And yeah. we're able to take those, and they're so portable that that it doesn't look like you have a film studio. A film studio used to be if oh, you yeah. if you were to take broadcast cameras, it, it, yeah. it's huge. Yeah. But now it fits in a, a, a backpack. And so we were able to do that. The, the challenges that we had, we, we were in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, and Hurricane Matthew came in. And it was scheduled uh, the way that the, the, the uh, weather people had predicted. We finished filming, said goodbye, drove all night, came to our church, and that was coming right, according to the radars and everything, it was coming right across the top of our church. And we stood and proclaimed the word of the Lord and said, you're not coming here. You're going to back up. And the weather people uh, said, it, there's an oddity. This doesn't happen. This, this has forward motion in this direction, but this storm just backed up and took a jog <laughs> and went north and went all the way around us. Well, that's quite a coincident, right? Yeah. 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 Coincident. <laughs> then we left and uh, in Gatlinburg, we, we were going to take a few days off. Now, this is all during the filming. This is all filming. during the filming. Yeah. We had our so cameras. So you're going to take a little R&R. &R. Yes. Yeah, we had our cameras with us because we were going to work a little bit. You yeah. know how mm -hmm. that goes. And uh, we <clears throat> had our hard drives with us and we got caught in the fire in Gatlinburg oh and lost everything. Our condo burned to the our ground. Our condo burned well, to the ground. Well, it's winter, you're alive. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's true. The footage from China that was so amazing, we lost in the oh. fire. And so we had made duplicates and we had another uh, hard drive crash. And so we had made some duplicates in China. This was a little difficult, but they were able, we had to wait until somebody could bring it to us. But they didn't have it all because we didn't, uh, we didn't leave it all with them. But the amazing thing, this is a miracle, uh, the amazing thing that took place was on our way out, after we had given them the footage, on our way out we went through uh, a, a Chinese village as tourists and we were just having fun and took several shots. When we got to the airport, we had no contact. It was impossible for us to do this, but when it came in from China, the thumb drive came in from China, it had that footage on there also. It was impossible. Oh my goodness. So we've seen impossibilities. Wow. Then uh, Hurricane Irma interrupted the release of the film. They're just following you guys. And it, 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 it was. And, People were starting to get nervous to travel with and, us. And so we, we were actually in North Florida and during this time frame and we were trying to uh, promote film and do a service up there for women, my wife was speaking, and while we were in that place, this is all during the making of the film, while we were in that place, a tornado set down on top of the church, church. we were in. So it's been one thing, <laughs> I mean, gracious. two hurricanes, a fire. A snowstorm. <laughs> so Satan's saying, don't you get it? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Satan really fought yeah. this. Yeah. And we're really, uh, we really believe that so God. So where can you has see us. this film? 
Well, you can. Uh, now we're going to put out there's there's on the screen, right? Okay. They can go to that website. Yes. You get yes. all the information. Yep. Hope has a name movie dot com, and you can uh, purchase the film uh, via DVD, or now we have it available through digital download. So they could show it in their okay. churches. Yes, we have well, uh, the screening churches, packages right. for churches, public screenings, um, and there's all that information is on the website. There it is, right Great. on the screen. That's yeah. the DVD. That's yeah. the way it looks. Yeah. Well done. Yes, it does. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now continue. She was. <laughs> it's okay. I interrupted no, thank you. you. No, that was good. No, you jump in. Um, no, just you know, snowstorm, um, tornado, oh, two oh hurricanes, flood. Our church, the hurricane actually did hit Irma, um, did hit us, and then a week later we flooded um, on the island. So it's just been broken hard drives, um, burned computers. I mean, it's just been crazy. Equipment. <laughs> Equipment. Yeah. Um, Wow. One of your computers fried too, I think, mm -hmm. during that time. So just right. random things mm -hmm. happening that just several times I thought, you know, are we going to be able to do this? So if somebody watching this telecast, the Lord says they need financial help, mm -hmm. you wouldn't reject it. No, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you have, you have, obviously. A call that you just don't flat give up. Yeah. I mean, 80% of the people would have said, "Okay, that that's it. You know, I we're going to regroup and go another direction. I don't think this is for us." You just kept going forward. Just kept going. We believe in uh, in words of prophecy, and that people do as long as it lines up with the Bible and lines up with your spirit, sure. yeah. we're, we're yeah. good with that. Yeah. And so we've Glad had, you said that. We, we had uh, a couple of uh, people who were very prophetic and been proven over a period of time at different intervals tell us this, this is the first of at least three. And so we're, wow. we're going to continue this journey and we've already making contact with some additional people. We have a lady in Nicaragua mm -hmm. who literally lives in the dump. Uh, wow. With children, with children and she's taking care of these individuals. So I'm excited about her story, even though I can't tell you much more than that because that's all I know right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Lisa, women seem to be called yeah. to this kind of yes. impossible ministries. Yes. Yes. Is it because uh, maybe they're more compassionate? I don't know if it's the, the nurturing, or yeah, maybe maybe it's mm -hmm. the, the nurturing. Yeah, it's a nurturing that God part put of women. In us, just the compassion, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just so. I don't, I don't want to say proud, but just, you know, pleased at what God's doing. And I think there's just really a, this time that, that, you know, Lou Engel's doing right now with mm -hmm. um, Rise Up, um, you know, getting women to rise up. We had nothing, I uh, had no idea about that when we started filming. But, and it's also encouraging men because, you know, not to make less of us, but if we can do it as women. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of the men that are watching this are saying, I don't have an excuse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, these women are doing it, and, and yeah, maybe it is because of the nurturing or the, the, the heart, you know, to help the wounded and the hopeless. Right. M maybe you that are watching, you only need is encouragement yeah. from one person. Yes. Go to that website. Maybe God's calling you to be a part of something you never thought you could do. God bless you. Okay.